Hey everybody, Anthony here, SpecialtyMotorCars.net. Got a neat video to bring you this week uh, on a comparison. I always wanted to do this, a comparison of the two iconic full-size 90s, mid-90s domestic luxury cars that I love. And I think we're kind of the most iconic cars out there for the mid-90s for Lincoln and Cadillac. Um, you probably remember these two cars by the time you're seeing this video these cars have both been sold So I'll save you the phone call to ask if they're available But I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two cars being the 97 town car Cartier Cartier and the 96 Fleetwood Rome now it'd be cool if they were both 96s obviously 96 was the last year of the Fleetwood Brome. Uh, they didn't carry it over 97 97 was the last year of this body style so i guess the comparison is the last years of the good bromy type rear wheel drive luxury cars town car continued on up till 2011 but a lot of people say from 98 to 02 they were garbage just style wise i mean still the same town car but not as pretty as these ones were uh, 03, they brought it back a little bit with the stand up hood over it. So I got them both side by side here. It snowed out last night. It's a beautiful, cold New Hampshire winter day. But I want to show you what these two cars look like side by side. Um, you know, a lot of people ask me, what do I prefer, Lincoln or Cadillac? In this vintage, you know, talking about one of these Bromes or one of these town cars, I would probably have to say I'm 75 25. 75% Lincoln Town Car, 25% Cadillac Brome. I'm a Cadillac guy day in and day out, through and through. GM guy for sure, but these town cars are just, oh, I love them. If you follow my channel, you know that. If you don't, subscribe down below. I got all types of cars like this coming and going all the time. Nice quality, low mileage cars. So I don't want to babble on too much. I want to show you both cars and do a side-by-side -side comparison so you can take a look at both of them together. So the two cars that I have here, both cars that I had recently sold, you probably see the videos of them. This is a 1996 Cadillac Fleetwood, and that's a 1997 Lincoln Town Car. Now, both examples are the top trim package for both cars. The 96 uh, Cadillac here is the Brome package, being at the top of the line, only offering two packages for 96, actually the 93 to 96 body style, with the Brome being the upper Fleetwood trim level. Lincoln, they threw in three trim packages and they've had those for a while now. The base executive, the midline signature series, and then the top of the line Cartier or Cartier edition. Um, and so both examples here are the top versions of both cars. Now you can also get them, you know, optioned with or without moon roofs, with or without chrome wheels. And these are kind of a mix of both. Um, both cars I will throw out there now have some aftermarket period correct accessories that aren't factory. And I'll point those out, but were common to see back in the day. So this 97 Lincoln Town car has got 44,000 miles. The Cadillac Fleetwood Brome has 65,000 original miles. These town cars, I absolutely love them. 95 through 97 was this exact vintage body style where the 90 to 94 was very similar, uh, but they just refined them just a little bit more for the 95 through 97s. And I really dig this style with the lighted light bar in the back. Um, the dashboard is a little bit more, we'll say, I don't know, aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> and then the 96 Fleetwood next to it, that was 93 to 96. Uh, they carry this on until the end of the line. They stop the rear wheel drive platform and they switch the Arlington assembly line over to SUVs where they brought the town car all the way up till 2011. The biggest difference that you can see between the two of them is the use of metal chrome trim. Cadillac kind of kept that older look uh, where Lincoln kind of ditched that, I want to say, in 1990. Uh, Cadillac kept up. I mean, essentially, this Fleetwood here has got all chrome on the bottom of the car. And one of the nice features that this car does have is it's got the factory optional chrome wheels. And that really finishes off the bottom of these cars nicely. So they had a few different wheel choices for these cars. 
but here you can see it's a chrome faced wheel and it goes with all the chrome down the bottom of the car wraps around the back of the car and wraps around the front of the car tons of chrome the whole bottom of this car is chrome the other wheel that you could get for this car was the base alloy but this is the upgraded chrome wheel which i think makes these cars look phenomenal um just so you won't get thrown off aftermarket accessories being this uh alpha style grill people love it or hate it it's a very rare grill to find today uh the padded vinyl top now funny thing is most of these cars came with a, a padded vinyl top but this is an aftermarket eng padded top that it's a limousine style in case the rear window comes over the doors where the factory top ran you know just on the roof they didn't come over onto the doors like this uh some gold emblems and gold ornamentation all probably dealer installed back in the day but same with this lincoln town car uh the dealers loved these cars back in the day because there was a lot of aftermarkets you can throw on these cars um you could get all chrome on the bottom i've had some cars on my channel that have had that it's just a stick on chrome they're either plastic or real stainless a lot of them you'd see come through these weren't factory but they fit the car perfectly um the stainless steel wheel lip moldings again people love or hate them and then the canvas top this is really big back in the day you know the crazy th <laughs> the crazy thing is here they put the name cartier with the lincoln insignia right next to the quarter window that said the same exact thing but these tops were very big back in the day for dealer added accessories whether the dealer would put them on beforehand and you know dress the car up on the lot to get it off the lot or the customer would say hey i want to put a canvas top on it let's say hey, go down and visit our eng classics or vogue um, dealer or installer but just side by side you can see that both behemoths of cars big nice rear wheel drive floaty cars but there's not as much chrome and glitz and glamour on the lincoln as there is on the cadillac the cadillac is just loaded with chrome I kind of like the look it's a little less chromey i love chrome don't get me wrong one of the things that i wish this lincoln did have was a 16 inch i believe they call it the eight pocket chrome wheel which was the upgraded wheel for these cars just like these chrome wheels make these cars the chrome wheels that were available for these lincolns i think 96 and 97 only were absolutely phenomenal i'll put a, an example of it right here on the screen you can see that wheel is absolutely gorgeous um so that would have been nice to have that as a comparison but aside from that they're both pretty well optioned um you know behemoths of the mid 90s but the styling differences well they marketed to the same people they're totally different cars um i really like these town cars big thing with these town cars is their um rear suspensions on these are airbags instead of coil springs where the Cadillac has coil springs and they have air assisted shocks for the load leveling. So this Lincoln, you're basically, you're legitimately riding on air when the Cadillac you're riding on a shock and a coil spring, but it has a level riding system. When this goes bad, you can still drive this car. When this goes bad, forget about it. It's sagging on the ground. We've all seen pictures of them, but just a comparison of the front ends, really beautiful cars. Now, I mean, things that haven't changed that have changed. Lincoln, by 1990, had gone with the plastic-style uh, headlights, where Cadillac, still by 96, had glass beam headlights. I don't know what the technical term uh, for it is. But these never fog up. They never get, you know, crazed over and yellowed. These are actual glass. Corner lights are plastic. Big, beautiful corner lights. Corner ring lights. I love it. But the Lincoln, they went to plastic in 1990 and continued that up. Obviously more expensive, but you never have the problem of dulling uh, headlights or fogging headlights. Now, just a comparison of the front bumpers. You obviously have a steel-plated chrome bumper with the old-school bumper guards. Lincoln did away with that and in 1989. It was the last year of the chrome bumpers and the bumper guards. But Lincoln still tossed in. Just a nice little strip of chrome, even though it's plastic chrome, as compared to Cadillac throwing a little plastic piece of molding to offset the chrome. It's a big difference. Another classic thing that Cadillac had on all these Fleetwoods was this long strip down the side of chrome that followed from the window 
all the way down both fenders and on the quarters factory installed just kind of a nice appearance this car did have pinstripe installed on it which i give or take on these cars these lincolns from the factory were pinstriped but no chrome a little bit of chrome trimming around the windows here you can see the door sashes or whatever you want to call them all here and cadillac had the same but they continued it all the way down now these factory installed chrome wheel lips aftermarket they wouldn't have any kind of chrome wheel lip on that car uh door handles same same thing completely opposite traditional you know pull style uh that you see on a lot of cars today well, this was kind of the old flap up style that you'd open and close. Kind of, not as oftenly seen today uh, on the cars. Come to the back of the cars here. Again, you get the plastic bumper, wraps around big chrome molding. Where on this side, you have all chrome, more bumper guards. Now the different, big difference on the back of these cars uh, his height is a little bit higher on the Fleetwoods, it seems to be, than the town cars. But you can see by 96, Cadillac was still using a power antenna. Quarter-mounted power antenna. In 95, Lincoln did away with the quarter-mounted power antenna, which would have been right here. And instead, put it in the rear glass so you wouldn't have to worry about going through the car wash and sawing off your antenna, which was kind of nice. Um, you know, just little differences here and there with both cars really makes all that of a difference to change these cars and to change the look of these cars. Uh, so that's the outside walk around. There's a lot of other small details and stuff like that, but I just want to have them both next to each other. I'm going to show you the interiors, open both front doors and show you how the dashboards are laid out. And uh, we'll wrap the video up after that. So one of the things that I really like about the Lincolns is the dashboards. Um, I, I don't really care for the style of the dashboards of the Fleetwoods. Um, I think there was just too much dashboard. And if you saw the videos of both of these cars, you wouldn't understand what I'm talking about. So let me take it in and show you what they Here's look like. Here's the dash on the 97 Town Car. This dash ran from 95 through 97. Very simple layout, beautiful, very elegant, flowing, kind of a wave design on the center. Wraps around the door panel and ends in the door panel. You come over to the Cadillac, there's kind of no flow to it. It just goes straight across. And the size of the dash pad on this car is absolutely huge. I mean, I, can, I can't even touch the, <laughs> the windshield. And I mean, I got my arm extended over this. These were very prone to cracking. So much space to, to get beat up by the sun. They'd usually start cracking right here in the center or around the passenger side airbag. And you can tell it just it was kind of an afterthought. Like Cadillac didn't really care all that much at this point and just threw this little square in there and this big old dashboard, but still very elegant, all digital instrumentation. Um, you know, it's automatic climate control, a little bit of wood trim here and there where Lincoln kind of, I don't know, I want to say they refined it. They care a little bit more. And if you sit in this car, you can kind of see that. You know, nice dashboard, good size, got the clock right up on the top. These dashboards didn't crack. I mean, I've seen them in really severe conditions crack, but for the most part, these didn't crack. Um, easily laid out, big buttons like all old people like. Again, digital instrumentation. One of the cool things that Lincoln offered uh, by 95 that Cadillac offered, which is kind of weird, in some of their mid-90s cars, but there's Papa Bear. Uh-oh, yeah, checking on me like I might be goofing off outside of him. Playing out in the snow, Papa Bear, come on. Take those keys out. Is they offered steering wheel audio controls, fan speed controls, and cruise control right here on the steering wheel. Finger, fingertip touch commands that you could change your radio presets, the temperature on your audio, uh, your climate control, your automatic climate control. It was all right there at your fingertips. And the thing is, when Cadillac had that, they had it on the side of the steering wheel, if you remember right. But they never offered it in the Brome. And the Brome wheel is the same as like an Eldorado or a Seville wheel, where they could have very easily integrated that into the car, but they chose not to. Um, both of these cars are optioned with the heated seat switches, memory seats. So very similar there. That's all controlled here on the door, where the Cadillac is down on the side here. Um, back seat, 
same thing. Nice and plush. Both manufacturers in their top trimmed cars offer the rear vanity mirrors and then the flip open ashtrays. This is just an ashtray where I think the Cadillac still retained the uh, cigarette lighter accessory port. By 97, Lincoln did away with that. Um, we'll come over to the Cadillac here and show you just kind of, this is real basically laid out, kind of square and blocky like I guess 90s Cadillacs were. Um, but you can see here the controls for the heat. Right here is for the, uh, you know, all the other controls for the memory seats. But these steering wheels, they had right here the audio controls and the vent controls for the automatic climate control. They could have very easily incorporated that. And I believe there is a way you can actually do that on these cars. Come to the back here. Again, very basic power lock button, power window button, ashtray with cigarette lighter. And then you can see there the rear vanity mirrors. Uh, nice, big, large, you know, three person back seat. Very, very spacious, both cars. Uh, as far as interior space wise, I think the Cadillac has the Lincoln beat a little bit there. But in joy of driving, I think the Lincoln is just that much better. I'm gonna pop the hoods and pop the trunks and show you the comparison there. And then I will uh, show you a few other little features and we'll wrap it up. So by the mid nineties, <laughs> Cadillac and Lincoln were all about trunk space. I think Lincoln a little bit more. Now the Cadillac trunk space is very nice. It has the traditional pull down, which we'll all kind of come to know. Uh, but the layout, very big, very spacious, very, you know, good size trunk here. Um, deep on the corners and power pull down unit. One cool thing with the Cadillacs that I really do like, and I wish every manufacturer did this still today, is have the gas cap right here in the middle. By 96, Cadillac was still doing that on the rear wheel drive bromes. They've done it from the 70s all the way up, and Cadillac have, has always done that on these big rear wheel drive cars. Where Lincoln was side mounted fuel filler. Um, you know, it was kind of neat to see it in the Cadillac. You could pull up to any side, but obviously more traditional is the Lincoln style uh, being on one of each side or one of either side. Lincoln trunks are a lot deeper. You know, you have this big well kind of rubbing right on each fuel uh, frame rail with wells deep down inside. Tire is mounted up on the top here. And Lincoln kept this trunk design all the way up until 2011, but instead they took this tire and they made a quarter mount. They put it in here, kind of took up this space, but it gave you the space up there and it also squared off this area. So when you try to put something in the trunk here, you get the spare tire overhang, you kind of, you lose a little bit of space there. With the tire now quarter mounted, it was a donut by that point in 2003 and a newer, where it's not uh, mounted on the, the rear deck here, uh, you could get a lot more space inside, more cargo space up there. It was a lot nicer uh, of a setup. One touchdown, closes right down, pulls it right down. Now under the hood, we'll take a look. Two very reliable V8 engines, both naturally aspirated. The Lincoln has got the tried and true 4.6 liter V8 that, as everybody knows, they use it in the taxis and the police cars, yada, yada, yada. These were in a lot of cars throughout Ford's history. Great engines, very, very easy to work on, very easy to maintain. Um, you know, just super awesome drivetrains. Not power plants or rocket ships. It wasn't the Cobra inspired or the, you know, like in the Mark 8s or the Continentals. But a real nice, you know, proper 4.6 V8 in these town cars, uh, which gave these cars a lot of good reputation out there to being very reliable, easy to work on cars. Slam that aluminum hood down because you have to slam it down. You open up this big steel hood. And this is Cadillac's LT or GM's LT1 powered V8. Uh, and a lot of people say, oh, that's the cup, uh, Corvette engine. Well, yeah slightly detuned but a 300 350 cubic inch lt1 powered v8 these things were torque monsters rocket ships i love the drive lines in these cars 
I would like one day to take this driveline chassis and put it onto like my 89 uh, Buick station wagon. I think it would just be awesome to take a chassis under on, out of one of these Fleetwoods or a Roadmaster and put it in one of the 80s Cadillacs or Lincolns, um, sorry, Cadillacs or Buicks that have the uh, dog down 307 and just have a total rocket ship. Um, one of the things that a lot of people hate is the OptiSpark system with these cars. Love it or hate it, that's what they have. Uh, it's the distributor <laughs> and everything is all behind that water pump. You can see the plug wires coming out of there. But total rocket ship of an engine, really nice setup. But there you have it. There's the two iconic mid-90s, last of the big ones, I guess, except for the town car because the town car carried on. True domestic luxury cars. Forget Mercedes, forget all the other competition out there. Chrysler, I don't, don't even think about that here. <laughs> but these are it. Cadillac Fleetwood Brougham for 1996. Lincoln Town Car Cartier for 1997. Tell me what you think down below in the comments. Let me know what your favorite is, why it's your favorite. And just tell me what you like overall. Style-wise, looks-wise, too much chrome on the Cadillac, not enough chrome on the Lincoln. And remember, back in the day, you could make the car look the way you wanted it to make. Cadillac made it with all the chrome. You couldn't delete that. But if you wanted the padded vinyl top, if you wanted the Vogue tires and stuff like that, the aftermarket accessory companies for these cars back then were huge. Lincoln, same way. If you wanted all this chrome on the bottom, you could put all that chrome on the bottom. I get a lot of cars in like that. I like the dressed up look. I also like the plain Jane, no top, nothing crazy going on look as well, but to each their own. Anyways, my name is Anthony, SpecialtyMotorCars.net. Check me out on Instagram, SpecialtyMotorCarsNH. Hit the like button if you like the video you see here. This is kind of just a off-the-cuff video I have of both cars sitting here before they both get shipped off to their new owners. Uh, so any questions, let me know in the comments below. I appreciate everybody for tuning in. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you on the next one.